He was one of Top Chef's most popular contestants. Girls talk shit. That's bull shit. Since winning over fans on the hit Bravo series, Dale Taldi has launched six restaurants and has three more on the way. His flagship, the self-named Taldi, serves up casual Asian-American cuisine in Park Slope, Brooklyn. When we were cooking for um, investors to you know, raise funds for our, my first restaurant, Taldi, there was a core group of dishes that we always knew was gonna be on the menu, and this was one of them. Vietnamese fish tacos with tomato jam and herbs. It kind of really represented um, the flavors that we wanted to put forth, uh, big and bold and brash and um, you know, the dish is really a boneless bronzino with um, this tomato jam that has a ton of herbs and herbs and spices in, in it, a ton of fish sauce, a lot of garlic and ginger, so it's, it's, it's complex, I think, the ingredients, but it's really just a chunky tomato salsa, um, a piece of roasted fish and these herbs that go on top of it, and you wrap it in a mushu shell like it's a fish taco. I don't know, to me it's just kind of the perfect way to, to have dinner. Kind of a fond memory, it's one of the first dishes that we made when we were conceptualizing the restaurant Taldi. In 2015, Dale published his first cookbook, Asian American, proudly inauthentic recipes from the Philippines to Brooklyn. It's really about um, kind of my style of cooking um, that we started doing at Taldi. Um, my first restaurant, really kind of Asian dishes done through the lens of someone who was born in Chicago. And um, yeah, it's done well, we're really proud of it. Today, Chef Talde is opening up his Brooklyn home to show us what he really cooks for dinner. Welcome to my house. All 605 square feet of it. There's George. What's good, George? Why I chose this apartment, the views is so sick. We're five minutes away from my restaurants. You can't see them from here, but they're just five minutes away. Um, Pork Slope is, and then Talde's probably another 10 minutes away. Yeah, I love this neighborhood, man. It's super dope. Really kind of proud of this first one. It, it was a People Magazine shoot. It was one of the first times I was in a magazine. Unbeknownst to us, when um, the f cover was already picked, but when Obama won, they changed the cover to put him on it. And when we realized that we were part of the same issue, it was like really kind of important for us. It's crazy how, if you look at the picture of Obama, it was eight years ago and he has aged crazy. And so have a lot of us. I think Tom's lost a bunch of weight. Padma is beautiful as always. She's ageless like a vampire. And then um, people like myself that eight years ago I was young and handsome and not bitter and now I'm fat and old and decrepit. Season four, when I got kicked off the first time, you know, they let you bring in ingredients and some equipment and it's stored in this box. They're like, go get all your stuff. I'm getting kicked off. I'm keeping this as a <laughs> memento. So my favorite ingredients here, um, some of the stuff that my mother-in-law kind of sends me home with when I ask her questions about it. Um, this soy sauce that's obviously only meant for soup. It's crazy sesame oil that's like really thick and, and, and tons of great flavor. Uh, this Korean chili flake. One of the you know fun things in my uh, kitchen is this original lithograph from Cinnamon Toast Crunch. My wife asked me what the hell that is because she's a little young for um, <laughs> knowing that commercial. I've done some work with General Mills and I told them my affinity for Cinnamon Toast Crunch and they sent this to me. At one of the restaurants, we make a Cinnamon Toast Crunch dusted French toast. Let's take a look at the fridge. A lot of condiments, big fan of hot sauce. Because my wife's Korean, we always have tofu in the house. I always have things like mustard and anchovies and capers and pickles because I always know I can make I can make dinner with something if I have that. Yeah, so now we're gonna make our steak som dinner. It's really something that we do at home quite often. It starts off with making rice. A lot of times, like in my family, we eye the rice and I've learned that that is not exactly the best method for me. And it's typically a one-to-one -one ratio with short grain rice. So take any bowl, cup, you fill this bowl up with rice. I'm gonna fill this up with cold water. Always cold water when you make rice. Pop that back into the rice cooker and there you go. 
while we wait for the rice to cook, we can get started with the rest of this meal. If you cook it anything above medium, you've kind of ruined the steak. The animal's dead already. Why well, are you gonna kill it again? This is our steak som dinner. You know, really simple dinner that I love to prepare for my wife and I um, quite often. It's simple, it's probably four or five ingredients. Um, and it starts, uh, it starts off with getting a really good quality steak. You know, when we're looking for a steak, you're looking for all this fat inside the muscle here. Not so much on the outside, but more on the inside, and that's gonna determine how much flavor the steak has inside. Also, really important when before you cook a steak, is to let the steak come down to room temperature. Seasoning it liberally. You can't make great food without salt. If you season here, you're only seasoning um, the piece of steak in small pieces. If you season from here, you can get um, a nice even coating of, of salt. 30% of the seasoning that you put on top of this steak is gonna be left in the pan, so you wanna get a lot, of, a lot on it. Proper technique for searing a steak, personally, rip in hot pan. Let the pan go for two to three minutes, high heat. Let it start to really build um, uh, a nice heat so you can get a great sear on the outside and keep the inside nice and uh, mid-rare. A little bit of oil in the pan, and when you start to see it dance a little bit, it's when you know that the pan is hot. You really wanna hear that sizzle, that sear. That's a $30 steak. If you cook it anything above medium, you know, it's kind of like eating roast beef out of a deli counter. You've kind of ruined the steak. That's my personal opinion. You know, my parents, they still eat their steaks mid well. God bless them. That's just not how I roll. The animal's dead already. Why well, are you gonna kill it again? You could start to see the browning on the bottom of the steak, and it's almost time to flip it. It's close. So we're just using this to flavor the fat that we're gonna baste the uh, steak with. Now we drop in garlic, some of that butter. So we're gonna turn this temperature down to like medium, a medium heat instead of a ripping hot pan. And then we're just gonna baste the steak for a second. The butter, the butter's now browned with the garlic. Very important that you let your steak rest. What I am doing is I'm going to take the um, garlic and kind of place it on the bottom, just so it's not sitting in a pool of butter and then steaming and continuing to cook. It's an airflow beneath it. One of the best combinations is butter and soy sauce. So this kimchi was made by my father-in-law's sister. She, I guess, makes the dopest kimchi in the family. So that's kind of her job, and she gives it to um, all the sisters and uh, we're lucky enough to get some of this stuff and it's, I'm telling you, it's fantastic. I'm l really lucky to kind of get this kind of stuff because it's super homemade, super artisanal. You know, it's in the family. Salty, funky, sour. It's nice and ripe, as they say. That's a positive thing. But I love in New York City or if you go to these smaller stores that are Korean owned shop owners, they will make kimchi and they'll sell it. Um, and something, find something that isn't like store-bought or manufactured, you know, it doesn't have a label on it. Like, that way, it might be in a deli container and it'll just say kimchi. You know that's homemade. I really love this stuff to snack on or just, you know, like we're doing now, we're making Assam, which means wrapped. The last part of this is just the rice. And now we just assemble. That's it. Important that you're eating it al minute because the, the seaweed will get um, will get wet and you want it to kind of have that crisp still. Now George wants some. Right George? How about that? <laughs>